Hey everyone, so this video is by request. Someone wants to know if you could type an address into a form in Microsoft Access, and if you could then click a button on that form, which would open up the corresponding Zillow listing in a web browser, and the answer is yes. Now, even though this might sound like a really specific request for one person, I think there's some interesting attributes, which is why I decided to make a video about it. One, and, the, and that is the idea of interoperability between Microsoft Access and other applications, in this case, a web browser. Two, it gives you an example of how you can bypass some of the manual functionality of a website to get directly to what you want. Because what's going to happen is normally for Zillow, there is a like a splash page that you type the address in. We get to bypass that and go right to the information that we want because what we're going to do, we're going to take that address, we're going to format it, we're basically going to concatenate it into a URL and put it right into the Internet Explorer browser. And that's doable and it works because of the way Zillow handles, the, the way that the Zillow site is designed because to the best of my knowledge, they don't have tens of millions of web pages. Instead, they have several different data sources. It's all indexed. So we put in an address. It grabs the corresponding information from those various sources and then dynamically creates a web page. So we're going to show you how to put that information in so it can dynamically create the web page without going through their manual form. Okay, so let's click on Create. Let's click on Blank Form. Let's click on view and design view. I'm just going to get rid of the record selectors. I think it's a good habit to get into because it helps lock down your database and prevent un 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 um, unintended navigation. So I'm going to click on design. I'm going to click on property sheet. I'm going to click on format. I'm going to shut off record selectors and I'm going to shut off navigation buttons. Not essential, but like I said, I think it's a good habit to get into. Now what we need, we need four fields for the address and then a button. So we're just going to click on text and just going to create four. It's going to be a little messy to see because I really don't care about format. In this case, this is purely about data handling. To be, specifically, to be specific, we're going to concatenate these fields together. And our button. And we'll cancel out of this. Now, if you click on the text field, you'll see it has the name of text 0, text 2, text 4, text 6. I'm going to leave it as those because since it's a very small database, it's easy to find them. But in a larger database, it's probably a good practice to rename these. That way, it's better self-documented. So in other words, you'd rename this to, say, ST underscore NUM, so street number. Rename this to ST underscore name, street name, so on and so forth. That way, when you're looking at the Visual Basic coding, it's self-documented what you're trying to do. I will, however, click on this and just change the caption. We'll type open Zillow. And again, be mindful of the end user. So we're going to click on open. We're going to click on event. What we want is when we click on this button, we want something to happen. So on click, that's what we want. So let's go to the ellipsis and we choose code builder. And this is application. dot follow hyperlink and now you just have to type out the hyperlink this i i was able to come across this because what i did is for testing i went to zillow and i just started typing in addresses and i looked at the common denominator what changed what stayed the same so at the beginning you always have the https calling double forward slash zillow dot com forward slash homes forward slash so that's always there close quotes then the ampersand and now what we're going to do is this part will be dynamic so the first part is static it's always that the last part is dynamic and it's going to be based on the information you entered 
So the ampersand, then me, and then dot. Me refers to the object the script is attached to. The script is attached to the form, so by typing me, I can now reference elements on that form. We said text, and there we go. They're all lined up, 0, 2, 4, 6. So we'll do text 0. And then when you're looking, and we'll go through this when we open the actual site, when we go to Zillow, between each element, there's a hyphen. So another ampersand, quote, hyphen. You have to use the quotes. You can't just put the uh, hyphen there. You have to put it into quotes. And then now it's rinse, repeat. So the and again, and this time me dot text to and hyphen and me dot text for and hyphen and me dot text six. Now at the end you don't need a hyphen, but for whatever reason, and I don't know why, it probably means something, I just don't know because I don't work for Zillow. There's an underscore and RB. And again, no idea why. So I'm just going to give this a once over, make sure I didn't make any mistakes. Me.text0 and hyphen, and me.text2 and hyphen, and me.text4 and hyphen, and me.text6 and RB. And it seems to recognize what I'm doing because it made those capital, because they were a lowercase. And I believe that's all we need for the coding. We'll save this, which also saves the form. And this should work. Okay, so now here's the thing. And I chose an address that, to the best of my knowledge, is abandoned property. Unfortunately, not everyone on the internet are decent people, and sometimes they see an address or a phone number or whatever, and they flock to it. So I'm using an address that, to the best of my knowledge, is abandoned. So we said this is the number. Now, the only limitation with this, as I said, you can't have spaces in the URL. What they do is Zillow adds hyphens. So here's the problem. If you type out, um, in this case, it's N for North, Main, and then ST for Street. If you type out N space, main space, ST, it won't work. So currently in this form, you would need to do this. So just as we are automatically adding the hyphen between the 99 and this, adding the hyphen between here, and we're adding the hyphen here, you have to merely put the hyphen in here. So what you could do, you could add a filter to this field so that before you create the concatenated address, what you could do is this field could automatically look for spaces and replace them with hyphens. But, you know, you can always, uh, if, you, if you're not looking to do anything too fancy, you could tell your data entry people, look, don't use a space, use a hyphen, and that's just life. And the city and the state. So if I did not make any mistakes, this should work, and then we'll review the ad, the URL. Sure enough, it opened. So you can see it's saying it's for the address we chose. And again, like I said, I did my best to try to find an empty property. You don't want anyone getting harassed. And if you look at the address, as I said, www.zillow.com home. So 99-n-main-street-pascog ri underscore rb, and then they append this to it. Not sure what it does. Maybe this is part of the indexing. I don't know. Again, I don't work for Zillow, but um, it was that easy. So like I said, I thought this was a good demonstration because you can see the interoperability between Microsoft Access and another application, and is an example of specifically how you can bypass some of the manual data entry in a website and get to exactly what you want. This won't always work, but in this case, 
it does work. And when I mean don't doesn't always work, I mean there might be another website like apartments.com or something like that. I haven't tested it. No one asked me. Someone specifically asked for Zillow, Zillow so I dug in and discovered that this is how the website works. So I think that's about it. So a short lesson, but it's really actually quite simple. Like I said, the only thing that you could do, if you want, I could add it in another video. And that is when you're typing in the address here, if you don't want your data entry people to have to do the hyphen, you could uh, look for spaces and automatically replace them with hyphens. You could also do other things like maybe someone hit the space twice where well, you don't want two hyphens, pretty sure that would uh, mess up the link. So you could do things like that. Re if there's more than one space, you remove the spaces and you replace it with just one hyphen rather than two or three hyphens. Okay, so I hope you found this was useful. If you have any requests, let me know. Uh, just leave a comment and say, hey, can you do such and such? And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.